righty. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to Go Talk. We're here this morning with Nick Monge. Nick is a sub two deals coaching student, and he's going to talk to us today about finding deals in hot markets. Uh, Nick's down here tearing it up in Colorado, which is one of the hottest markets in the U.S., uh, but he's going to talk to us today uh, about how he's finding some deals and, and what he's doing. So welcome, Nick, to the yeah. Go Talk. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on here. Yeah. I'm looking yeah. forward to it. Yeah. Glad to have you here. Hey, uh, listen, everybody, uh, tag somebody, tag a friend, a couple of people, invite some people over. Uh, let's get every one of them that we can in here to uh, watch the show and learn a little bit about what's going on out here in the market today. Uh, so tell us a little bit about your background, Nick, how you got started and how you got started investing and what got you over to the, the dark side of sub two. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I started investing, I want to say in 2018. Um, honestly, I just kind of stumbled, you know, across the uh, the Bigger Pockets podcast. And that's honestly kind of where it took off and started reading a lot of books and stuff. At the time, I was active duty still, active duty Air Force. I served for 10 years. So I just separated this this past September. So it's been it's been about six months now, but I quickly realized that investing is what I wanted to do. You know, I, I've done a lot of different niches um, and different strategies. Um, but basically, I, I just jumped into it. I started networking. I bought some properties and, you know, it kind of, you know, that's where it all started. And then I learned about sub two um, through your podcast, solely your podcast. And that's where I learned everything in uh, probably late 2020. So it's probably been like six or seven months. Right. And uh, that's, that's where I got into the sub two yeah. realm. Yeah, I remember uh, the day that I had that call with you and you were asking me like a ton of questions about it. Yeah. How does it work? What do you do? And that sort of thing. And yeah, so I mean, man, you've you've really took off in the last six months or so. So good for you. Hey, hey, Phil, how's the weather? Well, listen, it's supposed to be 70 and it's really sunny today. It's really nice, but no guarantees that there won't be any snow. Uh, for sure, we're we're trying to we're trying to ward it off with the Hawaiian shirts and everything. So uh, we're trying to we're trying to to keep it away. But yeah, the weather's pretty nice so far this morning. Uh, good morning, John. Good to see you, Matt. Good to see you on here. There's Rudy. Uh, good to see you guys. Listen, uh, give us a like, a thumbs up, uh, and uh, and ask your questions. Uh, so we want to give you this freebie. Listen, we got a fantastic freebie for you guys today. You know, we always give everybody something that participates. And we were putting together uh, this little report on how to find deals in hot markets. And uh, I'm telling you, man, this thing just turned into a monster. And it's like 40, it's a 40 page ebook now. It's uh, the 20 best markets to invest in in the US, uh, including 15 ways to find deals today. So, hey, good to see everybody coming on here. Uh, let's see. We've got Tom. Good to see you, Tom. Uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, there's JC. Good to see you, man. I just talked to JC and his wife, Tammy. We just did a podcast together. They're a power couple down in Florida. They're buying in five states. So, man, they're kicking tail. Uh, good to see you, Mark. Uh, Tammy, good to see you on here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Nick. Uh, thanks for your service. We all thank you very much for that. So, uh, yeah, we got a bunch of people jumping on. So we're going to try to get right into it. Put your questions in the box here. Nick's going to answer all your questions this morning. And uh, so let's let's start out with with the main thing here. While we're here, uh, Nick, how now everybody knows you know Colorado is it's hot all across the country. Colorado is super super hot. I mean. You know, you got realtors posting about listings that are they just put on the market that they can't show for two weeks, uh, that uh, they're already getting offers 50,000 over asking. And yet you, you, you message me at least every few days saying, hey, I just got one under contract in your town and all. So tell me, how are you finding these deals in the hot market? Yeah, so it's definitely a tough market right now. Uh, low inventory, um, definitely a seller's market. Properties aren't staying on the market for any more than three or four days. It's it's crazy. Um, but really, what I'm doing is I'm just super laser focused on on what I'm looking for. You know, I'm of course looking for the single family properties, three plus bedroom, two plus bath. 
I don't want it to be any older than maybe 20 years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I'm doing, there's, there's so many different ways to market and, you know, places to, to source deals from, but what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm looking at expired listings. I'm looking on Facebook marketplace for for sale by owner. Um, I have a couple cold callers that we have dialing for us. And uh, that's, that's really where I'm, I'm getting most of my leads from whether I close them or not. That's, you know, that's a completely different story. Mm-hmm. Um, but it really comes down to like, I guess the situation, their situation, you know, people, um, especially with COVID right now, you know, there's so mm-hmm. many different reasons why people would be selling. So it's just, it comes down to finding motivated sellers and kind of talking to them about their options. Right. Okay. All right. So you're talking about expired listings. I know, and, and we look through it occasionally just to see what's going on. And, and there, you're right. There are very few. It was interesting. I actually did a podcast a couple of weeks ago with Armando Montalongo. And, it, you know, and this guy is like, you know, buying houses all over the country. And I mean, he's, everybody knows who he is, but, and he's talking about what happens is um, when the market's super hot and people start saying, oh, there, there are no more deals to be found here or there. So everybody just moves away from it. And I think that answers a lot of the questions about why you can find deals in expired listings. Because if everybody goes, ah, oh, there are no expireds, but there's still a few, not very many people are reaching out to them or no one. So when you call them, it's not like they're getting a thousand calls a day. So that's probably why that's working, you think? Exactly. So I'm hawking the MLS. I'm a broker here in Denver. And uh, every single day I, I pull the expired listings and I just go through there. Um, it's, I mean, with the, with the market as hot as it is today, it, it's definitely harder to find those expired listings. We've been sourcing deals from other sorts of leads, mm-hmm. um, but that's definitely a good spot. That's probably where I got at least 50% of my deals from expired listings. Mm-hmm. And, and so what are you, uh, good morning, Tammy. Good to see you, Tossie. Good to see you, Jeff. Uh, good to see you guys on here. If you have any questions for Nick, just throw them there uh, in the uh, the message box there, and we'll get them on here. Uh, what are you finding to be the most common seller motivation right now? Uh, I know uh, we talked with uh, another student uh, that, that that's it's buying houses uh, from from landlords that aren't getting paid and they don't know what to do. And as elite investors, we know there are options other than just eviction. We know that we can go deal with people and and pay them to leave if we have to, if the numbers make sense. What I find is a lot of times landlords that have owned a property for a certain length of time, it becomes personal for them when somebody doesn't pay uh, and they can't see past. Well, I've just got to get this person out. Uh, So we can come in, buy the house, make a deal with a tenant, pay them to leave if we have to, and still make a good deal. But what are you finding to be the most common motivation right now. Yeah. So I feel like a lot of those landlords, you know, that have one or two rental properties don't get as creative as us investors. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't really understand the cash for keys or, you know, paying somebody to leave. They think eviction is the only option there. Um, what we're finding a lot of is, is definitely those uh, forbearance properties, properties that are in foreclosure, you know, if they're owner occupied, we go after them and we're like, Hey, you know, we'll catch you up. We'll take over the payments. It's a win-win situation. Cause we're getting a property. You're going to get a good payment history on these properties. We can take them over, catch you up, save you the burden of having a foreclosure on your record. And if you flip it, you get those landlords that have properties where their tenants can't pay because they lost their jobs or whatever the case may be due to COVID. Mm-hmm. So we're also targeting those people, you know, absentee owners that have or, or tired landlords that don't have, you know, paying tenants. Right. So that's that's where we're getting a lot of our leads. Those two sources. I get you. Uh, Matt asked, where can we get expired listings? So it depends. Um, if you're not a licensed agent, I would make really good friends with a licensed agent. Uh, maybe if you find somebody that wants to relist their, you know, let's say, let's say you make friends with a, uh, ex, uh, an agent, ask them if they can send you these listings, be like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. If I find a, a deal, um, that can go on the market, I will send it to you for a referral or something as kind of a way to, I don't know, I guess, pay them back for, for getting that list of expired. That's, that's what I would do. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, so do you, Tom asked, do you call or direct mail expired listings? I'm going to guess 
following the premise of you can't steal in slow motion, man, you're dialing those people up right now. Immediately. I'm dialing those guys. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not really a huge fan of direct mail. I just haven't, it's, it's a great option. Um, I just haven't done it much. There's only a few sorts of leads that I, I do any direct mail with. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Tammy's asking, uh, she wonders if and how you use prop stream or other tools. Okay. Yeah. So I use prop stream a lot, mm-hmm. um, specifically for absentee owners, um let's see i do i do pull some tax lien list once in a while but most of my properties are either absentee owners or just vacant properties um and that that's really what i'm targeting with prop stream but mm-hmm. i get really deep with the criteria i'm really filtering it down to who i think would be super motivated to sell right of course um and then if I use, you know, the MLS for expired listings. I, th- I think that's probably the most accurate information because it's mm-hmm. daily. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I use my prop stream. Right. Uh, just, just to, to add on a little bit to, to Matt's question about where to get expired listings. I, I'll tell you this, and, and this has been my play for years, uh, is just to find an agent uh, that you can deal with. And, and I, I don't know, the ethics, that's on them you know, what they are allowed to do and this and that. But if you can find somebody that will either make you their assistant, which they can do, uh, or just give you access, direct access, and whether you compensate them uh, through paying for their MLS fees or whatever it is you do, it's well worth it. Uh, And where you can just get on there and log on and you don't have to depend on somebody to provide you with a list every day or whatever. I can go in, filter by whatever way that I want to do it, go in anytime I want to and take a look. And it's just worth a lot to be able to get that. Now, some MLS offices offer uh, an associate access and of course some don't. But I guarantee you in any market you're in, you can always find an agent. (laughs) <laughs> that will oh, do that for you. Yeah, uh, you definitely can. Yeah. I was talking to my partners the other day. I was like, hey, we need to find a young 18 or 19 year old that just mm-hmm. got into real estate and, right. you know, they want some referrals and mm-hmm. yeah. it's worked. I'll tell you that. So, yeah. well, you know, and, and I was just reading an article recently where it was talking about the flood of people into real estate because the market's so hot and everything's going on. Uh, yeah, and that always happens. You know, by the end of this cycle, there'll probably be three real, three licensed real estate agents for every man, woman, and child in the U.S. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. everybody wants to get into real estate. Did you guys see that video someone posted in the group yesterday about those two guys that made that video talking about had fifty offers within two? Blah blah blah. They were doing this, uh, this like yeah. rap video. I mean, it was hysterical. And but you know that is the way it is. So everybody wants in now. Um, but yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting when the cycle is over, you know, they're going to go from the rap to the blues. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, so we got a pretty direct question here from Andrew, the postman's in here with us. Good to see you, Andrew. Uh, how many deals are you pulling in a month now that you're going, would you say? So, so right now we're looking between three and six a month. Mm-hmm. Wow. Somewhere right in there. That is serious. And in one of the hottest markets in the country, that's for sure. Gosh. Okay. Well, there you go, Andrew. Uh, How does that make you uh, make, makes us all feel like slackers, doesn't it? But anyway, uh, but you know, and I've, I've told uh, uh, Nick this many times um, that man, he's, you know, he's sitting on a gold mine being a broker, a licensed broker there. I mean, he's got everything coming to him every day. Not only that, but when he goes out to meet with a potential client, if the deal won't work for whatever reason, there's no equity or whatever, he can switch right into investor mode and say, exactly. hey, we've got an option for you. We can buy your house right now. And uh, so I'm, I know you said that's been effective for you too. It's been very effective. I always give people different options. If it's, if it's something where they need a lot of work in the property or it's not market ready and they just want to be done with it. I always offer, you know, secondary options for them. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, Rudy asks, how do you get the numbers to call expired listings? So what I do is I just pull the list from my MLS. If you don't have MLS access, you can also pull the, pull expired listings from PropStream or other third-party sites like that. 
but I just use a software called direct skip and it's amazing. It's a very accurate. I've used other services that skip trace and I haven't been as successful. So I would highly recommend that, but that's what I do. I just pull the list. I get it back within an hour and I get to work. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, Kevin, Kevin, you're absolutely right. There are more realtors than there are homes on the market. Uh, there's less than a week's supply of houses here. Of course, Nick, you already know that. I mean, it's, yeah. it's amazing and it's just continuing. Um, so Jeff asked, how many contacts, leads, calls, offers per deal? So what's your ratio there? How many people are you having to dial up before you're able to, to get something? So that's honestly, that's a number we don't have quite dialed down. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been talking to my people about really getting our KPIs down to the number, you know, right now we're, we're a little bit sloppy there, but I want to say that we're getting at least for every offer that we submit, actually, I'll say for every three or four offers that we submit, we get one deal. I'd say that's probably about where we're at. Yeah. Um, I have two cold callers that are dialing for me. Each of them dial, I want to say probably five to 600 calls per day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, we're probably getting about six to eight leads per day from those right. calls. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah, that is fantastic. Hey, Tossie, you did nine deals in March. Okay. You need to message me because I want to talk to you. Uh, we want to talk to you. Are, were they all sub twos? That's interesting. And uh, I'd love to know what market you're in. Uh, Matt says, how many contracts equal a deal? Or how many contacts? Okay, I think you just pretty much answered uh, that question. John says he's studying for his license now. Okay, man. I, I, that's what I mean. Everybody, everybody's out there and, uh, and is getting licensed right now. So, okay. So here, here's a question, Nick, we see this all the time. And, and in fact, you know, talking to somebody who six months ago didn't really know how a sub two worked. I remember, like I said, our conversation, uh, this is a big newbie question. How do you get them to agree uh, to a sub two, how, how will anybody in their right mind let you take, take their house and them stay re responsible for the loan? How does that work? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And honestly, I had the same question, you know, when I was getting started, I was like, who the heck would just sign over the deed to their property and leave the, you know, the loan in their name. It, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, but honestly, after doing it for a while, it, it really comes down to just being super transparent with these sellers, you know, explaining the process to them, what exactly it is that you do. Um, a lot of times what I explain to them is like, Hey, you're in foreclosure. You're six months behind on this loan. You're going to get this house taken away from you. You're going to have this bad mark on your record for the next seven years. I can help you with that. You know, I can pay off that. I can catch you up, you know, the forbearance, I can take over the loans and uh, you can basically move on and, have great history uh, credit, you know, over the next two or three years, because I'll be making that payment for you. Um, but really, I just tell them, hey, you, you really need to look past what it is like, I, I understand you're nervous. It's, it's a liability at the end of the day. A lot of people ask me like, well, what if you don't pay? And I tell them straight up, you know, it's going to screw you over, you know, it's going to be really bad, you know, it's going to affect your, your, your credit. Um, but people really appreciate the honesty and the transparency. And I think that's where, you know, it's very important to build that trust with people. But I just tell them, hey, this is what's happening. This is your current situation. I can help you in these ways. And I just offer solutions to them. And they like that, you know, and that's that's really the biggest thing, building that trust and, under, you know, making sure they understand the process and right. just being transparent. Right. Uh, I totally agree with that. Uh, I, I actually think... You know, and for years and years and years, my line's been the same pretty much. If you get that question, what happens if you don't pay? You know, my immediate comeback is if I don't pay, your credit is toast. Uh, and I think that shocks a lot of people, but it shocks them in a good way that you're so open about the facts. You know, exactly. if you don't pay, yes, their credit will be impacted. But, you know, as you've done this for longer and longer, you see that, um, you know, you can say, listen, I've done this for five years, 10 years, whatever the case may be, this is my business. And, you know, we're going to make sure that your property gets paid for. Um, absolutely. So yeah, being honest, that's, uh, that's exactly what you want to always be with your sellers because you're really in business with them until the loans paid off in a sense, most of them you'll never see again, 
but uh, but yeah, I mean they're they're sort of your partner in the whole thing. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Uh, uh, we had a question. What's your favorite part of Colorado to invest in? I, and I mean you're all over the place. I know you're down here and in Denver, but do you get much beyond uh, those two metro areas? So honestly, a lot of the deals that I'm getting are up in like the Fort Collins area just because it's closer to the army base up there. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of VA loans. I like VA loans. Right. (laughs) So that's, that's where most of, you know, my business is in Colorado. However, I'm, I'm open to anywhere here locally. Um, I'm in Denver. I'm down in the Springs. There's plenty of VA loans down there. Um, But I, I feel Fort Collins area is definitely a little bit slower of a market. It's not quite, you know, where Denver and the Springs are. So it's a little bit easier to find sub twos up there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Gail, I see you. You you qualify for that freebie. Go get that vaccination. Uh, but uh, yeah, good to see you on here. Uh, Rudy says in his area, realtors can put you on a mailing list to receive emails with properties that meet your criteria. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and, and that's a good thing as a secondary, in my opinion, but getting absolute total access to the MLS is what you want. And in my, it's just my opinion. And obviously Nick's here, he's a licensed broker. It works for him. Uh, But unless you're working actively that side of the business as a realtor, I don't think it's a good idea um, to, to have a license just to be an investor. I think it's a liability because of all the disclosure and everything. But if you're actively working it as an agent, you're, you're, you're both sides of things. Yeah, it's probably pretty good. Uh, Bonnie asks, who do you work with for title and closing? So I had a recommendation from Will, mm-hmm. um, Mr. Bronchick. He's a, uh, attorney here locally. So I, I've used him a couple times. Other than that, we just, we just do it at their kitchen t- table. Right. You know, we, we, we get the paperwork ready and uh, just kind of go to them and have the notary and get it all done. Yeah. Yep. That's that we, we close 99% of ours with our seller and a mobile notary. It's just not necessary. Is that something you should do as a newbie? No, it's not. I can tell you my first sub two deal, I did had the wrong kind of deed done and I screwed just about everything up that you can do. Of course, I had a great attorney when the time came and my buyers refinanced and he got it all worked out for me. Uh, my advice is to go to a reputable person to get your first couple of deals done until you're comfortable with the process. But when you think about it, you only need a couple of documents notarized. The rest is just signatures for sure. So yeah, we, we believe in, um, in self-closing. So uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Tossie that sub two she did was a VA loan. So yeah, VAs are great. You got people under a tight, tight timeline. They've got to move. It's not like they can just decide whether they want to or not. In most cases, they can't afford two house payments. Uh, and in, 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 in normal times, they don't have any equity, <laughs> but, you know, here uh, they can buy a house last year pay full price over full price and have equity today, but it's usually not much, but, but enough to pay an agent, but in normal markets and normal cycles, uh, they'll buy a $200,000 house finance to 10 have to move in a year. Oh, two Oh six. The house is worth two Oh six. And they just don't, you know, most people in the military, they just can't afford to write a check for $15,000 to pay an agent. So yeah, it works out. Uh, Phil, kitchen table for both sides, buying and selling. What do you say on that, Nick? Because I know yeah. your, your, your disposition on most of your stuff is seller finance as well, isn't it? Exactly. Yep. So same thing. You know, I, I do the same thing when I, when I sell that property, um, mm-hmm. just kitchen table it. Yep. You kitchen yeah. table closed. Now I disagree with Nick on that front. Doesn't mean it's wrong. Okay. Uh, if you want to do that, you can, but he's doing stuff locally too. He's not doing it across the country, but w- when you can meet with your buyer face to face, you probably collect the down payment yourself. You do all those things. You, you've got more of a trust situation there. Uh, when you're working across the country from somebody though, that you've never really met, it's really, uh, using an attorney gives you more 
uh, uh, you know, just credibility. You're using a licensed person. They feel more comfortable. They're handing over twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and most people close with an attorney. So if you're doing it remotely, you definitely want to do that, for sure. In my opinion. Uh, morning, Ken. Good to see you here. Uh, Jeff wants to know what those two cold callers are costing you, and are they uh, local or are they uh, foreign? They're foreign. Okay. Um, I pay I pay them each four dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. They call 40 hours a week each. So you can you can do the math. Um, it definitely adds up. However, the the amount of deals that we're getting from those calls mm -hmm. far outweighs, you know, what we're paying them. They, right. they pay for themselves right. with one deal. Mm -hmm. So so I'm guessing that your callers are just they're taking a script from you with maybe eight or 10 basic questions. And the people that are open get passed off to either you or an actual closer. Uh, to get things done are, are you doing the actual follow-up call saying hey you talked to my associate earlier this week and we're calling back to talk to you a little bit about the the deal yeah absolutely so we're actually expanding a lot right now um we're actually in the process of hiring a couple more vas for for other markets um but yeah basically what happens is and that script let me start with the script we had a terrible script at first and we were getting a lot of leads that weren't really leads. They were just answering the questions and we were being right. passed their information. We recently changed that script. I actually wrote it myself and I'm surprised at how well it's performing, but we're getting a lot more qualified sellers, which is huge because everybody that we follow up with, it pretty much wants to sell their house, you know, within the next two or three months or, you know, it's immediate because it's vacant or for whatever that, that reason is. Um, but yeah, basically at this point, I'm just following up with those leads myself. Um, we do have one other acquisitions guy that we, we hired and uh, we're, we're slowly expanding, but that's kind of how it works right now. Those callers get the information, we track it in our CRM and we follow up with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So Andrew asked a question. I, I want to get back to that script, but these things are rolling pretty fast right now. How many of the vets you're dealing with immediately want to buy another home upon transfer? So that's a good question. Um, honestly, most of them do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, of course, it comes back to being transparent with them. You know, I know that with the VA loan, you can only use a certain amount per, per house you buy because each market's different, like there's a different cap for each market. And I just tell them, hey, it might be difficult. I don't know your financial situation, you know, to, to reuse that VA loan. Um, but I, I kind of help them, guide them and make them, you know, choose the best option for them. Um, oftentimes, on the other side of the coin, oftentimes they don't want to buy another house. When, and those are the ones I really like because I don't really have to answer so many questions and stuff. Right. But at the end of the day, as long as I'm being transparent, um, you know, it, it always works out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mark asks, are your callers from the Philippines uh, and using dollars to call that many people a day? Yes. Okay. All right. So there you go. Now, did you hire those through a service or did you find them directly on Upwork or something like that? So initially we hired them through a service. Yes. Um, and then we ended up kind of hiring our own. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got you. Okay. Uh, my beautiful bride is coming back to the, the question that I was, I was going to ask you initially. Uh, what questions did you add that filter out the duds on your script? That's actually what I had to come back to here. So what changes did you make in that script that you think helped you? So we just added the qualifying questions. Um, so we got some generic scripts, you know, initially off the internet, you know, some, some gurus website. All right. And basically, you know, after realizing all these leads are just basically just telling us information that you would want to know about the house, but none of them are qualifying questions. So some of the qualifying questions are, what's the current condition of the property? Is it vacant? Why is it vacant? Okay. Um, we want to know why, how long it's been sitting. So that's the first one, the condition and the vacancy. Um, the next question is how quickly do they want to close? If it's like a year out, I wouldn't really consider it a qualified lead yet. We'll just follow up with them, you know, in a few months and, and touch base with them. So condition, um, how quickly they want to close, um, how much money they're looking for, you know? So we take that number and we compare it to the market value. And if it's 
above market value, they're probably not super motivated. And if it is um, somebody that's motivated, maybe we'll just, I'll either list that lead or I'll, I'll hand it off to another broker. Mm -hmm. And then last question we ask is the reason why, why do you want to sell this house? Why is it a burden to you? If it, if at all a burden, um, if it's a, if it's a rented property, I always bring it up. I mean, it sounds like it's a great performing property. Why would you want to sell it? You know, we try to pull this information out of them. So those are the four qualifying questions. Right. I got you. Okay. Now I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Any chance of getting that script from you? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to put this out there. This is a challenge out here. We're, we're uh, 30 minutes in, we've got another 30 minutes. We're sitting at 46 people here. You guys invite some people, tag some people. If we can get over 50 in here this morning, uh, if Nick shares his script with me, uh, we're gonna put it out to everybody out here. So uh, you guys invite some people, tag some people. If we get over 50 on the call, and I'm watching the number, uh, we're gonna, Nick's gonna share his script in addition to the other freebies. So, so you guys get to tagging. Okay. Uh, let's see another question here. Uh, Tanya also asked, what uh, would you include in the script? Well, there you go, Tanya, tag some friends. You'll get the script. You won't have to have to guess. Um, what list do your VAs call? Paul's asking that question. So they pretty much call everybody. Um, our expired listings, our absentee listings, everybody. Um, for sub two, high equity list is what we're looking for. Not on the market over 10 or 15 years of ownership. Mm -hmm. There's just a bunch of different lists that we pull that are kind of geared towards either the wholesaling side or the sub two side. So mm -hmm. Um, yeah, they, they dial everybody. Right. And you're, you're getting uh, pretty much all of your scripts, I mean, all of your, your list through prop stream. Yes. Yeah. Probably 95% of them besides expired right. listings. Right. Guys, prop stream is a super tool. Uh, you can test drive it for that. Paul, there you go. There's the answer to your question. Prop stream. Uh, it's a super tool. You can use it, uh, and generate, uh, at the, the tier that we use uh, at 10,000 uh, leads per month, which is going to keep your callers busy for a while. Uh, so use that. You can get a seven-day free trial and get a break on the price if we use our link. And uh, I can probably get my assistant to put the link in here uh, somewhere for you guys. So uh, you guys check it out. Like I said, use it for seven days. See what you think about it. And uh, if you don't like it, just cancel it. It won't cost you a thing. So great. Um, so another question uh, that we get a lot of new people asking, uh, and, and like I said, having somebody on here like you that, uh, you know, a year ago you hadn't bought a sub two and now you bought a ton of them. So asking for something as basic as mortgage information. Uh, they're like, well, you call somebody up. How do you get them to tell you that those things, they seems kind of personal. Why would they divulge that information? So how do you get a seller to tell you about their mortgage if they've got one? Yeah. So I've had a lot of fight back on that. You know, a lot of people are like, well, it's none of your business, but it, it really comes down to being transparent with them again and just explaining the process. Like, Hey, I explained to you that I'm going to catch up the loan if it's in forbearance. I need to know that exact dollar amount to make sure that this is something that makes sense for me. You know, it needs to make sense for both of us. I'm not, this is what I do to put food on the table. You know what I mean? Um, but basically it's, I say, Hey, um, I need to know the exact dollar amount so I can catch you up. And I want to make sure that um, I'm, I'm paying the right amount of money and can justify what I'm paying for this house with the amount that you're behind. Um, if that makes sense. And then just recently, actually, I had a person literally give me their login information so I can go into their bank and just look and kind of, you know, pull as much information as I needed to. But I think it really just comes down to being transparent again and just saying, hey, I, I need this information. And if we can get this to work, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll catch you up and you guys can move on. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So they'll just tell you. Uh, exactly. If you know, and, and I, literally maybe one out of 20 will refuse to tell you. And they're not who you're looking for anyway. They're just not motivated enough to do it at this time. If they won't even share that information with you, 
uh, then you know right away that they're they're not the person that you're looking for. Jeff asks, are you using private money or hard money for any closing cost, repair cost, or down payment cost? And I'm I'm going to answer that for Nick in the beginning because I, I think I know what you probably Nick probably does the same thing we do. His exit is typically seller financing, so he's using his buyer's down payment to pay for those things. Exactly. All right. Yep. Okay. So yeah, uh, if you time this thing right and you've got a buyer's list uh, and you're, you know, as soon as you get something on the market way before you close, you're already marketing it uh, to other people and you're collecting down payments and, and deposits. So yeah, is that how you do it? Yep, that's exactly how I do it. Okay. Uh, Anthony wants to know if this recorded for future playback. Well, sure, Anthony, we don't take these down. So uh, you can always go back to them. We're going to leave them up for you. Uh, okay, Tanya says, just one more person. Let's see where we're at right now. Uh, let's take a look at yeah. the at the at list. We're, we're at 49, guys, one more person. Let's see that big 5-0 on here. We're going to give away Nick's script. So we appreciate that. I think you guys can do it. Um, Mike asks, are you getting at least 10% down? Shoot, in this market? <laughs> Yeah. Um, most of our deals are at least 10%. Mm -hmm. Um, we're, we're typically between like eight and 10% down somewhere in mm -hmm. there. Yep. Yep. That's what we've been doing for years. You can get eight and 10% down on a nice house. And I think Nick, uh, uh, I think you mentioned this earlier, you're sticking pretty much to the same, uh, type of house that we look for. We look for something relatively newer, uh, in a nice neighborhood, uh, three bedroom, two bath minimum where people want to live. We stick within uh, 20 minutes or so of the metro area. We don't get too far out, too remote, that sort of thing. Uh, just where people can commute and, and not have to live right in town. That's what we're looking for. I think that's what Nick looks for as well. Tossie yeah. says she gets 20 to 25 percent down. Definitely message me. I want to talk to you. Dang, <laughs> what, gonna, what market's that in? <laughs> yeah, what, what market are you operating in? I, I suspect she's going to tell me that uh, that she does deals all over the place, but I might be wrong. So, okay. So what are we looking at numbers-wise, guys? Are we getting Nick's script or or not? Okay. I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I My apologies. I'm a dude. Okay, so I made a mistake there. Uh, I just went by the name. Uh, so anyway, great name. Um, all right. So on to the next thing, Nick. So tell us, tell us some more about, uh, about, oh, Georgia. Okay. Georgia is, uh, where you're operating. You know, the first 12 years that I invested, I was in Macon, Georgia. So it was a great market. We did a lot of business, bought a ton of houses. We used to buy three or more foreclosures just about every single month. So yeah. I don't know what they're doing down there now. So I'm, I'm guessing that the, um, the foreclosures aren't as good now as they were then, but it'll all be coming back pretty soon. So, yeah. okay. Well, tell us, tell us about your, your latest acquisition, Nick, about the latest deal that you've done and, and how that thing went and uh, how you found it and just kind of a case study on that. Yeah, absolutely. So there was this one property, um, it's, it's actually, I'm still dealing with it right now. Um, but basically it was an expired listing down in the Colorado Springs market. And uh, I reached out to the listing agent um, just to get some more information on it. Typically when it's expired, they're a little bit more open to telling you about the property. So I called him and he, he straight up told me, hey, it's a mess. This, this place is, you know, it was a hoarder house before. It was a mother and son that bought this property together with an FHA loan, which I hear all the time. You can't do sub twos on. Um, that's not accurate. Um, so I ended up, he ended up giving me the mother's phone number and I called her and she's like, yeah, you know, I, I really want to sell it. We were having trouble selling it because there's a, a solar lease on it. Mm -hmm. It turns out that that solar company completely shut down, like it went bankrupt. And she told me that there, that that solar lease is now, it was like null and void. Like they just kind of left it there and 
Yeah. So I don't, I, I never really, I, I still haven't got that answered yet. I don't know if that's going to be, you know, an issue for me or not, but I guess that's one of the reasons why they were having trouble selling it. But the numbers, let's say, I think the ARV was about 285. They only owed about 235 on it, but that solar lease at the time during the listing, they still owed like 22,000, which would have, you know, carried over with the sale or they could have paid it off, but they were just stubborn and didn't want to do that. Um, so basically, 285 ARV, still trying to figure out what to do with the solar panels, and they only owe about 235 on it. I could, you know, I've been talking to the, the son and the mother about purchasing that. Um, they only want 5,000 down to walk. However, they are behind on the payments. I think it was like seven or eight thousand dollars. So it's going to be about 12 grand to, uh, to take over this property. But I've already been sourcing some buyers for it. Um, I haven't closed on it yet, but I already have people that are interested in buying it um, 10% down. So it's mm -hmm. going to be about 28,000. Right. And uh, yeah, it would just, you know, we just do a, a land contract and, right. and sell that thing. So they, <clears throat> so they want five grand. It's been a hoarder house. So you're probably going to have to do a couple of things to it. Uh, yeah, carpet, paint, that sort of thing. Maybe exactly. you know, ten thousand or so uh, for something like that. So, I mean, you're still looking at putting thirteen thousand in your pocket up front, and then probably four hundred plus a month in cash flow, and then a nice yep. back. I mean, still a fifty, sixty thousand dollar payday. Exactly. Um, yeah, and and that solar uh, lean. I, I know. I think I talked to you about that a little bit ago, and I would certainly take my chances with that. Uh, that it's either, you know, going to just disappear or uh, it's something that you can definitely track somebody down. And I mean, worst case scenario, you had to pay for it, but I doubt that would be the case, but still yeah. a deal for sure, for certain. And just another example about how uh, people, you know, that have problems or, or the people that you really want to deal with, they couldn't sell the house because of the lien and it, they couldn't, didn't think it could be satisfied and that sort of thing. So, okay, guys, looks like we hit 51. So uh, I guess we're going to get Nick's script. So Nick, when we get off the call, you'll send that to me. We'll uh, fix that up and uh, get it out to, to everybody. So Absolutely. great. All right. Yes, yeah, Sarah, we're excited about that, Bonnie, for sure. Uh, Tossie said he did one, got 100000 down during COVID in April of 2020. Uh, he's refinancing in May and cashing him out. He's been making payments thirty five hundred a month. I got the house for four eighteen, sold it for five eighteen. That is fantastic. So yeah, Tammy, yeah, we're excited about that. Crossed over fifty today. That's great. We want to see this this grow. If you guys, um, you know, think that that goat talk on Thursday, you know, adds value, and and you you guys want to see it continue, let me know. Uh, give me a comment. Give us a reaction. Like it. Love it. Uh, we like that. So. Let us know uh, and, and send your questions in. So we've, we've got a few more minutes here with Nick and we want to make sure that we get all your questions answered. I'm a little bit interested about uh, the cold callers because that's something we've never done. And as we're trying, we're getting to the place in our investing and in our just business where we want to free up more time um, about, um, you know, how that works for you. Do you find that people have an issue with foreign cold callers? Is that, uh, is it just because they're initially screening or their accents? I mean, does that factor in? Do you, do you talk to the people before you hire them? I mean, what, what do you, if, if I were a new investor coming to you saying, I want to do, use a cold caller, what is, what are the best practices? What would you say? So I would ask around my network for references first because there's a lot of cold calling companies out there that hire and already have trained VAs that have been doing it and can provide you a resume or a pre-recorded you know calls from them just so you can kind of hear them and get an idea of, of how they sound. I would definitely be lying if I said it wasn't an, an issue that they were foreign and had an accent. Um, we definitely I've, I've used an American cold caller before, but it costs three times as much. Um, so that's why I kind of, you know, went the other way and tried it. We did have a little bit better luck with the American caller, but it wasn't, it wasn't 
you know, so good or so different that it justified paying all that extra money for the American mm -hmm. caller. So I figured I can get twice as many leads with two callers for a fraction of the price. Um, so that's kind of why we went that way. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do. I just, I look at the resumes, I listen to their voice, you know, I, I choose wisely kind of who I, you know, who I mm -hmm. add to the team, but yeah. All right. So, so, I mean, you said that you guys went directly, you went through a service first, you went directly and hired your own. Uh, can you share how you, I mean, did you hire them through a service like Upwork or Fiverr or, or something like that? Or So honestly, one day, I think just, you know, with my Facebook, my social media, sometimes I'm, I'm talking about deals and people see that. And uh, I just got messaged one day and uh, somebody asked, Hey, do you, uh, do you need any help with, with cold calling services? And I was like, Oh, sure. Send me the information and I'll, I'll take a peek. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where it all started with getting, you know, uh, foreign callers. And uh, I just reviewed what she sent me. It made sense. I made my choice and kind of went with it that way. So she just kind of messaged me one day and that's kind of where it took off. Right. Okay. Well, yeah. thanks, Tammy. Uh, Tammy says definitely adds value. Good. Uh, Tossy, good time spent for sure. Rudy, keep it rolling. Great guys. So, all right. Wonderful. You know, if I got to get up this early and listen, this is early for me. So um, yeah, I want to know that you guys are, are, are getting something out of this. So Matt asked, uh, do you feed your callers 10,000 leads? per caller per month. Is that how many of those guys are running through or? Um, so I said earlier, six to 700 per day. Mm -hmm. However, a lot of those calls go to voicemail or their mm -hmm. calls are dropped or whatever the reason is. So really what's, what's happening is each caller is probably focusing on that six to 700 leads for the entire week mm -hmm. um, because there's a lot that they need to get back in touch with or the, the no answer calls, they're calling them back. They just kind of get thrown back into the queue. Right. Uh, are you having them leave a message at all or do they just put them on the list to call tomorrow? They just put them on the list to call tomorrow. Um, okay. No messages. I personally, I, I don't like leaving messages. Mm -hmm. I'd rather get the person on the phone and right. talk direct because if you leave a message, they're probably not going to answer the call, especially if they're not interested. So gotcha. Okay. Yeah, I got you. All right. So uh, cold calls, we're, we're definitely going to have to look into that at some point, I guess, um, just to free up some time. Uh, in a normal market, it's great. Uh, you know, for years, I just I, I set aside the time to call 10 people a day. And I knew that I could I could count on buying uh, a house a month that without fail, just calling 10, I didn't have to do anything else. I didn't have to mail anything, or I could go on to literally Craigslist or, and, or Zillow, pull up 10 FISBOs that looked like they were vacant and had been listed for a little while, focus on those. And, and, and it's, I'm telling you, you can't even find 10 in most markets now. Uh, that it's are tough. for sale. <laughs> it's, it's tough. So yeah, it's it's a lot more fishing now. Uh, Matt said, "Do you uh, door knock at all, or use any other contact uh, to the ones on the do not call?" So I don't do any door knocking. Mm -hmm. I've never done it. Um, honestly, I'm a little bit scared of doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not that type of person. I know there's a ton of people out there that'll go out and door knock. I, I just haven't done it before. Um, but for the do not call list, my service just kind of cuts those out anyways. So we're not really dialing anybody on the do not call list. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to start doing the SMS blasting too right. soon. I think by the end of next week, we're, we're going to have two more uh, VAs doing the SMS stuff. Um, but yeah, no door knocking for me. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, if you're just getting into the texting, be prepared for some rude responses. I, everybody's on the texting bandwagon right now. We uh, we started doing that about four months ago. I think it's about four months ago and did it um, a bunch. And uh, man, that's tough <laughs> because all yeah. the wholesalers are texting and I'm not saying it doesn't work. It works. But uh, but yeah, it's tough. Uh, Mike said, with cell phones now screening non-known callers, leaving a message might become the only option. I'm telling you, you know, the do not call thing, the texting, the, the, all of that stuff, 
uh, there's a lot of legislation working right now to stop yeah. a lot. I mean, I know. we even see people uh, in prop stream, and you've probably run into this too, um, that are on do not mail lists. And I think that's going to be the next thing. That's going to be wild. I know. It's going to be tough. We're going to have to adjust and <laughs> yeah, figure but, something else out. But you know, that's what creative real estate people do. They adjust. And, exactly. and that's what you have to do in life because it changes all the time. Yolanda said, hi, I'm a newbie. How do you get your list? And Nick told us earlier, uh, he does what most of us do. He uses PropStream. I put a link uh, that's in, in, this, uh, in this thread here where you can go and get a seven-day free trial of PropStream. And if you keep it, you'll save a couple of bucks a month off the regular price by using our link. So go there, Yolanda, check it out, pull uh, PropStream, use it for seven days. If you don't like it, just cancel it. But you can get 10,000 leads a month through prop stream. Uh, Troy, what is the script that Nick uses for his callers? Listen, uh, we beat 50 people on the call today. So guess what? You're gonna get Nick's script absolutely free. So we're gonna send that to you later today. So you got lucky. Uh, Mark, love door knocking because of just what he said. That's right. Most investors won't do it. And that's why I loved it too. Yeah. Uh, and most people are okay. But it is a little intimidating, especially when you're first getting started. It is. I mean, I, I'm sure I'm sure it is. I've never done it, but mm -hmm. I'm just not the type of person. I'm I'm honestly the person that's answering the door, like, who the heck is this? <laughs> you know, so putting myself in, in the other right. person's shoes, I I yeah. I don't I don't know. You, you gotta be careful out there for sure. Uh, yeah, people are crazy today. <laughs> you know. know, they've always been crazy, but it's really tough. Uh, today. Uh, so Matt said, are you doing any inbound marketing stuff? Are you putting anything out there, ads or bandit signs or doing anything to generate inbound leads? So we've, we've done a couple of Facebook ads, um, but not many. The only, the first time I ever did a Facebook ad, I don't know what happened, but my account got hacked and I got $2,000 pulled out of my bank account. <laughs> like, I don't know if maybe I like clicked on a wrong link or I got fished or something, but mm -hmm that happens. So I've been pretty, uh, you know, uh, cautious with that, but I think we're going to start doing some more Facebook ads. Uh, we're actually in the process of building a new website right now where people can kind of go in and fill out their information, um, if they're interested in selling. So, uh, we can reach out to them because those are definitely the best leads, the leads that, you know, come to you looking for, uh, you know, some guidance or some assistance with selling that house. It's, it's kind of, I mean, this market is crazy and uh, it may be a little bit more difficult to find those people that come to you just because they can throw their house on the market and probably have it sold very quickly, you know, nowadays. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're definitely moving in that direction to, to get some inbound right. leads. Right. Hey, Petra. Uh, sorry about that. No, we, we've been doing this now. I think this is our seventh week for Goat Talk and it's 9 a.m., mountain time. It's going to be 10 central and 11 uh, eastern, but we leave the recording up so you can watch it on the replay if you like, and uh, so that's there's that. Tabitha, yes, we love free stuff too, and uh, that's why we make sure you guys get something if you participate on the call. Uh, Tossie has billboards as well as many other marketing efforts. I bet you do if you're buying eight or nine deals a month. I bet you got a lot of stuff going on. That's why I want you to message me uh, because I want to talk to you. I want to have you on here uh, one day and uh, share with everybody how you're, how you're getting eight or nine deals a month. Um, Ryan wants to know, do you ask the attorney if they're familiar with sub two before hiring? I know the only attorney I think Nick's used is Bronchick and he's pretty familiar with oh, yeah. the concept for sure. Yep. Yeah, very. Um, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend for anybody that's just doing their first or second deal, of course, you know, reach out to or get recommendations on maybe attorneys that have done it or have heard about it or um, just have the experience with it. Because I know sub two can get pretty messy if you don't do it right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So my, I would add to that, uh, uh, Ryan, uh, that, you know, anytime you're looking for a creative finance person, have a meeting with them, ask them a few questions, tell them exactly what you're wanting to do. In my experience, the older the attorney, the more likely that they're going to know what you're talking about. Uh, these young people, 
don't know much about it. Uh, if you're a member of your local RIA, that's a good place to start. Uh, and also, we had Scott Horn on here a couple of weeks ago, and he's an attorney uh, out of Dallas, Fort Worth. Uh, he's buys houses all over the country, been doing creative finance for over 40 years, I believe. And uh, he will act as a facilitator. So if you can't find somebody there locally uh, to do your deals, you can reach out to Scott. He'll find you somebody. I'm sure there's a fee for that. But once he hooks you up with somebody and explains the process and trains them for you, basically, then uh, you know, then you'll have them as a resource to use. Uh, so Matt asked, how many sub two deals are you getting per month compared to wholesale? So with the sub twos, we're, we're really, we're probably getting two a month mm -hmm. right now. Right. Of the, I mean, if we were to do six deals, um, two of them are probably sub two. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Stuart's asking how you're getting those number of deals a month. Well, you know, uh, I don't know how long you've been on here, Stuart, but, uh, you know, he's got a couple of cold callers. Go back and listen to the replay. If you're just getting on, uh, he's got a couple of cold callers dialing leads for him all day long. Uh, in addition, uh, Nick is a, a realtor. He's a broker. Uh, so he makes a lot of contacts that way. And I think converts some of his potential sales clients. Uh, Colleen didn't catch the beginning, but been on the call for 20 minutes and uh, happy to know you can listen to the replay. Well, of course, we're going to leave that up for you. Uh, yes, let me mention a couple of things. We're getting down to the hour and I don't want to keep Nick here all day, uh, but uh, uh, Bill Bronchick is having an asset protection class on Saturday. Uh, you can go to his website. We'll try to get the link for you. Uh, and sign up for that. But uh, listen, Bronchick was one of my very first uh, teachers. And, you know, in a sea of gurus uh, that teach you, I can tell you, he knows his stuff at whether it's asset protection, whether it's tax stuff, uh, whether it's creative finance, he knows it wholesaling, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's a good teacher and uh, he's somebody that's accessible. So uh, for sure, reach out to him. Uh, let's see, post the link for his Saturday call. Yes, we will get that in here, the link, to, link direct to that class so you can sign up for it. Um, and it's a virtual thing on Saturday. It's all day. Also, uh, okay, Tossie says everyone can go see Tossie Buys Houses on Facebook. Uh, plug the link in here. Yeah, give us the direct link and let everybody go take a look and, and see how somebody buys nine houses a month. So you're welcome, Bonnie. Good to have you. Listen, let me tell you guys about something. I'm going to post a link here. Uh, we're doing a webinar tonight. Uh, it's at five o'clock mountain, six o'clock central, seven o'clock Eastern. Uh, I've been on a bunch of webinars in, in the last 20 years. I've never held one personally, but we're going to do our first one tonight. It is live. Uh, there will not be a recording. There will not be a replay. Uh, if you guys want to get on there, and this isn't going to be your typical webinar, okay? I'm not going to spend an hour telling you what I'm going to tell you. I'm actually going to tell you. So uh, we are going to have an incredible uh, offer uh, opportunity for you at the end, but that'll only be about five minutes. The other 55 minutes is going to be teaching. So if you guys want to register, if you haven't, hit that link, get over there, register for the webinar. I'm going to tell you, we only have space. If you guys know anything about Zoom webinars, we have space for 100 people. And as of the time that Nick and I jumped on this call an hour ago, we already had over 150 registered. So if you register, get there early so you can get in. So uh, anyway, you guys uh, jump on that if you're interested. Nick, thank you so much for being here today and sharing information. Uh, about how you're doing business and uh, what's working for you. We appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. I appreciate you having me on. It was super fun. I'm telling you, if you guys have been in this business for any length of time, you know uh, most people that are going to share information with you have something to sell you. So when you can get somebody that's actually in the business, doing deals, making money, uh, that'll talk to you for free and tell you what's working, that's special. So these guys that come on here uh, that are real investors, uh, you know, it's, it's incredible and it's awesome. So, so join us again next Thursday, invite your friends, tag somebody. If they're not in the group, listen, they can join the group and we'll let them in. 
uh, for next week's goat talk. So it's good to see everybody today. We thank Nick again uh, for being here. We appreciate the heck out of him. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Go talk to some sellers and buy some houses. Okay. We'll catch you next week. Oh,